Four o'clock in the morning in the month of December 1989, I had an angel come to me and immediately said, my spirit left my body and we went up through the heavens. Uh, one thing I should add, Sid, is that there were a number of other uh, souls who had departed from their bodies, but their destination was obviously not heaven. But the angel took me into heaven. Just, just out of curiosity, how did you know their destination wasn't heaven? Um, they, there was a portal, a, an opening, a tunnel that they went into. And um, in, when, when, you're, when you're out of your body, all your senses are, how should I say this? You have the ability to see further, hear more, feel more, and I could see that they were going to the lake of fire. Could you see their reactions? No, no, because they were, they were, I could see their departure into the tunnel toward the lake of fire. Okay, so in the meantime, you're yes. going up, they're going into the tunnel. Yes. What's happening to you? Uh, the angel and I are speeding, speeding through the heavens very, very quickly and uh, so fast that I really couldn't see the planets or the stars. And then we landed in heaven. Um, I, I, I do want to say this to people because I think this is very, very important. People need to really give themselves the Messiah Jesus and go to heaven. And here's the first reason why. There's such joy there. Uh, the Apostle Peter said, it is joy, uh, unspeakable and full of glory. My experience, I would say it this way, it's joy indescribable and full of glory. And the minute I landed in heaven, said this joy exploded on the inside of me. Hmm. Yes, there's joy. If I could say this, uh, the Lord is full of joy himself, hmm. okay? And, and the people are full of joy, but this joy exploded on the inside of me and it was completely overwhelming. And so when uh, the Hebrew writer says, the joy of the Lord is your strength, it's really true. I mean, there's life in heaven. And so this joy is what people are looking for on the earth. And the key to this joy is, is, is giving yourself to the Messiah Jesus and developing a relationship with him. So that's the first thing I want to say to people. Uh, the next thing I want to say to people is I was taken uh, to the heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly temple, and there was a door that was, and the only way I know how to describe this, Sid, is to say it was uh, open and closed at the same time, but it was only open by appointment only. And the angel stood before me, and he walked through the door, and I just knew I'm supposed to follow this angel. When I follow this angel into this heavenly tabernacle, this heavenly temple, I'm in a courtroom. And there is God Almighty, sitting in the seat of the judge, the throne of God. And I could not see uh, God Almighty clearly. I saw this brilliant white light, this being of light, and this glory cloud that surrounded him. And I knew that I was in the presence of God Almighty. The next thing I did, said is I looked to my right because I just felt. It's an interesting thing about when you're in heaven, you just, sometimes you just know things. You just know what you're supposed to do. And I looked to my right, and there I saw the Messiah Jesus. As my heavenly attorney, as my heavenly representative, as my great high priest, and as my uh, intercessor. And um, uh, Jesus is the loveliest um, person I've ever seen. And um, so you were you were like in a heavenly courtroom, a heavenly courtroom, and you were given insight into what we're going to be judged on here on earth. What God said to me was this. He said, take notes and learn. He said, now the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And instantly I understood that what God meant was that he was measuring people. Now, it's very important for me to say this, Sid. God was not mad. God was not upset. God was not angry. Um, God, his heart was full of love, but yet I had this incredible sense of his absolute holiness and righteousness, and he wanted me to understand 
his standard, as it were, of judgment. And it had to do with love. And that's what began the change on the inside of me. And so this love really was vertical and it was horizontal. When I say vertical, I mean how we worship God through the Messiah Jesus and it's horizontal in terms of our relationships. And so the Messiah Jesus said this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And in the very same way I've loved you, the very same way I've loved you, love each other. And so what the father stressed to me is he was very concerned about people, about his sons and daughters, that we got our worship right and our relationships right. Now, when we have our worship and our relationship right, and that what Tony just said was the Shema, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, worshiping God and relationships and love with one another, it creates an atmosphere for miracles. Tell me one miracle that has occurred when you've been ministering. Just one that comes oh to mind. Oh my, uh, there are so many. I, I, I will give you this example. Uh, there was a young man from California. He was not a believer in the Messiah Jesus. He was just a typical person, a sinner, did not know God. He attended a church service and God was healing people. And so uh, he was born deaf. And so I By the way, that's a messianic miracle. That's why they were so amazed that Yeshua, the king of the Jews, prayed for people that were born deaf and they got their hearing back. And so I called him forward and I said, if God gives you your hearing, will you surrender your life to the Messiah Jesus? And he said, yes. I said, do you really mean that? He said, yes. And so he, he told me, I don't believe anything's gonna happen. So I prayed for him in the name of the Messiah Jesus, and then when I tested, of course I tested his hearing to make sure he was deaf beforehand, and when I tested his hearing after the prayer, he literally lit back, and his eyes opened up because he could hear <laughs> out of a deformed, deaf ear, and instantly he gives his life to the Messiah Jesus. I had met Dr. Rennie McLean, uh, he was doing a meeting in Borger, Texas, and uh, Dr. McLean's a weightlifter, and uh, I was more overweight then than I am now, and I'm still continuing to lose weight. He says to me, you need to lose some weight. And I said, yes, I do. Will you pray for me? And so he prays for me. And I felt nothing, but it was on a Thursday. I, because I, I believed that God was going to do it, I went to the clothing store. I bought a pair of pants I could not get in. And that was on a Thursday. And now, 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 by the way, what did the salesman think about that? <laughs> I didn't tell the salesman. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just, I, I just got. Listen, the I have pants. a whole wardrobe of pants <laughs> I can't get in, but that's not the reason I that I bought them too small. I but go ahead. <laughs> so then, what happens is, is on a Thursday I can't get in them. On Friday I can get in them a little bit. On Saturday a little bit more. On Sunday morning they fit perfectly. I preached in them. When I finish the service and I go home, it's afternoon, I'm still wearing these pants, they're buckled, they fall off of me. As time goes on, Sid, I discovered that I supernaturally lost 50 pounds. You, you weren't trying. I was not trying, I was not dieting. God just did it supernaturally. But once God did this for you, you find that when you pray for others, it happens. Tell me another story. Well, I began sharing my personal testimony, what God had done for me. and and that with God, nothing is impossible. And with God, all things are possible. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to the person that believes. Well, a woman came, she uh, weighed 400 pounds. The Lord spoke to me and said, she's gonna have supernatural weight loss. And she leaves the meeting. It appears as if nothing happens. One year later, she comes to see me. I didn't even recognize the woman. She said, you don't remember me. I said, no, I don't. She said, you ministered to me one year ago, and I have lost 260 pounds. And she wasn't trying. And she wasn't trying. Now, that's my kind of weight loss. Uh, tell me about, you, know, you had an experience that I'm interested in, uh, in which you were taken to heaven and told about the United States. Yes, uh, I believe it was 2003. Uh, my spirit left my body. I went to the throne of God, which, by the way, is as big as a mountain. God spoke to me. I wouldn't even lift up my heads because the experience of God's presence and glory was just so great. I was literally at his feet. And he said, pray for the United States. And essentially, this is the truth. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And that means institutions, business, 
economy, school systems, even organizations, even church organizations and institutions. Everything will be shaken. And what God wants to do, God's not mad, God's not upset, God loves people, but God knows that people are spiritually asleep. And so God wants to use the shaking to wake people up to seek the Messiah Jesus and the church to surrender to the Messiah Jesus so we can do what he wants, which is to bring people to Jesus. Then you had an experience in which you went to heaven and saw what I have heard reported by other people, mm -hmm. the body parts room. Yes. An angel came to me and he had sandy brown hair. He took me up into the heavens. I was taken to the body parts room. And there on the table and hanging were literally were hearts, kidneys, bones, livers, different body parts, fingers, eyes, ears, all kinds of body parts. And there were two angels assigned to me. One was an angel that would give me revelation concerning uh, healing, miracles, and other matters. And the other was an angel that would minister with me in the area of miracles. And the angel that was assigned to me for miracles told me that God was going to have me bring his healing power to the nations. Now, after that visitation, you have seen, <laughs> yes. I mean, can you imagine going 26 years and seeing nothing and then all of a sudden an avalanche? Tell me about some new body parts. How about kidneys? Uh, I ministered to a woman in New York. Uh, she needed two new kidneys and uh, the power of God touched her. She began to shake. She was a Catholic person. And I said, God will heal anybody if you will receive Jesus the Messiah. She did. And she literally was healed, received two new kidneys. On this subject, not just very long ago, I was in the state of Mississippi. A, a young man brought, either it was his mother or his sister, I can't remember to be honest, but she was on dialysis. Mm -hmm. And God gave her two brand new kidneys. I got the report that she doesn't have to do dialysis anymore. Boy, that is wonderful. What, what about the people with new knees? Uh, a man came to a meeting. Uh, he was crippled. He was completely bent over as if you were uh, uh, picking something up off the floor. His, uh, he needed two new knees. He'd actually died four times. He had had a stroke. He could barely move. He came forward, and uh, I asked him to sit down and to watch God do miracles because uh, what you see gets in you, and when you see the miraculous, you begin to believe. Jesus said, uh, you will not believe unless you see signs and wonders. And he needed two new kneecaps. He actually had a scar on one knee. And when he was prayed for, the pain in his, in his knee area disappeared. The old kneecaps disappeared. New kneecaps were put in his knee. The scar actually disappeared. His pain was gone. Then God healed his hips. God healed his spine. He actually gets up and starts walking. And, of course, the congregation just began to rejoice in the Lord because of this tremendous miracle. How do you pray that the body parts in heaven come on earth. How, how does that occur? Well, in, in my case, I think that God just gives me this supernatural faith to believe it. I never had it before, but I can just believe God to do the supernatural because God told me it was going to happen. And so whatever God says, he just does. So I basically command the body part to come out of heaven into the person's body in the name of the Messiah, Jesus, and it occurs. Well, could you pray for people right now Absolutely. that whatever God tells you right yes. this moment? And yes. I'm going to tell you why I'm asking him to pray right now. Because just as he started sharing about the new knee, there was a wave of God's spirit. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was his miraculous healing spirit that just invaded the studio. Father, right now in the name of the Messiah Jesus, I thank you right now, Father, that you're healing somebody of scoliosis. I thank you, Father, right now that somebody with a spinal condition is being healed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, that right now somebody with damaged disc is being healed. And Father, someone right now who is bent over and cannot stand 
up straight. I thank you, Father, that your fire, your healing power is going into their spine right now, and they're being healed. I thank you, Father, that somebody right now who has a, uh, 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 there's a part of the bone that's missing in the spine that you're creating it right now in the name of Jesus. And right now there are bone healings. There are people receiving healings in your bones right now there's a hip being healed there's a knee being healed right now there's an ankle being healed in the name of jesus right now i was in a service in new york he had 13 inches of metal in his leg he could move but he could not move without pain for example if he stood on his leg he would feel pain and when he came forward uh jesus touched him took his pain away. He was able to stand on the leg without pain, and he rejoiced. At first, he couldn't believe it, but then he rejoiced because God did this tremendous miracle for him. Don't and you wish, don't you wish you were there? Don't you wish you were at that the service? Well, you don't have to wish. God knew that. Let's take a look at it right now. Move to where, where you have pain. Show me where you have pain. Right there. Okay. And now I command you, metal dissolve now. Be replaced with bone now. Be bone, be created. Come from the third heaven. You can do it now. You've got bone there. The metal's gone. You can do anything you want. You won't find the pain. You need to try harder. <laughs> You can try as hard as you want. I expect it to be there, so it's... I know, but you've got a miracle. <laughs> you said I've been going to physical therapy for weeks. <laughs> they did the best they could. You just needed heavenly therapy. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, Tony, tell me someone else that had metal. Tell me about that woman. Uh, before this miracle happened, there was a woman, she was French. Uh, this meeting was uh, about 30 miles south of Canada in New York, upstate New York. She had 18 inches of metal in her spine. She could barely move. And it must have been very painful. It was extremely painful. And so she, when I prayed for her in the name of the Messiah Jesus, God just changed the metal to bone instantly. All of a sudden, she was literally able to twist, turn, bend over instantly because of the power of Jesus. Tell me about that woman whose arm was four inches shorter than yes. the other. Yes, this was in Arkansas. Uh, this woman had an arm that was four inches shorter. This was not a back condition. Uh, she also had metal from here to here. She could not even pick up a pot. And the supernatural gift of faith came upon me. I, uh, Jesus told me to command the arm to grow, and we literally watched it within five seconds grow out four inches. Here's what's amazing. She was an African-American lady. She had the metal here, and this arm was a different color than this arm. Instantly, the metal disappears. This color arm becomes the same. She goes home. She can pick up anything. I've talked with the pastor. I've talked with the wife. She's still healed. She still has the miracle. What about something... Uh, life-threatening, like cancer. Have you seen many healings there, Tony? I've seen many healings there. Uh, one case that I can share with you, um, I had a vision of a woman um, who had cancer. And God told me, with, with me, nothing's impossible. And then, um, and sometime later, um, the woman has cancer. She doesn't tell me about it. I walk up to her, and God tells me to tell her, Go back to the doctor, have them check you again. They will not find the cancer. She goes back to the doctor, and the cancer that had been in her lungs, they couldn't find it, and she is still healed to this day. Tell me another person. Um, oh, my goodness. There are so many cancer healings. Uh, there was a woman who came to a meeting in the state of Louisiana. Again, she didn't tell me about her condition. She actually left the meeting earlier, and God said to me, go out the door and get her. <laughs> and so I literally left the meeting. I, you know, I let folk know, I'll be back. I walked outside. I prayed for her. God touched her. She goes back to the doctor. And again, she didn't tell me she had cancer, but I talked with her about cancer. I said, God's going to heal you. She goes back to the doctor. 
They check her for cancer. They could find no cancer. She goes to her home church and gives her testimony how she's cancer free. Have you ever seen someone blind get their vision back? Let's take a look. Do you believe when I pray for you right now, you'll see right now? Because Jesus is your healer? Recreate. Recreate. Don't let her fall out. Recreate. Blind eye, I command you, see in Jesus' name. Cover up your right eye, darling. Keep it covered real good. You ready to see? You ready to see? Yeah. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. <laughs> well, there was a woman um, in, a, in a service in Missouri. We were just simply giving God worship. Nobody prayed for her. I didn't pray for her. No one prayed for her. And all of a sudden, she heard a voice. She was confined to a wheelchair, couldn't walk. She heard a voice and said, get up. <laughs> she got up out of the wheelchair and walked. Now, I'm curious because I'm fascinated. I said to her, how did you get healed? What happened? She said, I heard a voice that said, get up and walk. And I obeyed. And worship brings that kind of presence of God where the Father releases angels to heal people, to show, I'm God, I'm here. But you teach that the atmosphere for worship is created through love. It's That's exactly white. right. Well, Jesus loved God the Father and Jesus loved people. And you and I are to be his disciples and his followers. And Jesus was the servant of all servants. And Jesus showed us what the Father is like. So when you and I love God and love each other, and by love serve each other, then heaven has come to earth. And so the Father says, that's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to reveal myself. I'm going to show myself strong. I'm going to manifest myself. I'm going to do signs, wonders, and miracles. In 1989, you had a vision of the lake of fire. Tell me about that. If you can imagine seeing lava, um, fire, and brimstone for as far uh, out as you can see, as far to your left and right as you can see, low and smoky, and then what God did is he zeroed me in on a single person. And the fire wasn't just around, it was also coming up through and uh, then I went on, but I, I, I saw enough that I didn't want to see anymore. And, and that's what happens to people uh, who, who neglect, who neglect coming to know Jesus as their Messiah and Lord. And you know, if, if you could just experience the love of God, you would never ever want to be anywhere but his love. His love is so wonderful. His love is everything, and everything you have is nothing. It means, number one, you tell God you're sorry for everything you've ever done that's wrong, and you believe that he sent Jesus to die in your place, and by his blood, your sins were washed away as if you've never sinned before. And then you ask the King of love, Jesus, to live inside of you. Someone's throat was just healed in Jesus' name, and someone's back, and you are whole in Jesus' name.